Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Continuing work on this mid-70s Dodge 10 grill truck. Originally, this was, well, originally it was multiple trucks. The 1974 had a tank in the cab. That's a non-starter. I'm not putting a tank in the cab. I need the space behind the seat because standard cabs have no space. The 1978 had a tank that sat somewhere right in here. This 1974 cross member for the transfer case, you know, it goes over. The 78 actually had one that went underneath both the transfer case and transmission, and I think it was actually further this direction. Probably bolted in somewhere right around here. Regardless, the 78 gas tank, which is plastic, which would be really nice to use, ran right here, but it hits here, and there's no way to fit it, and, well, since it's plastic, I can't cut it and put it back together shorter. So I have to come up with some other mechanism or some other plan. I did this back in the 1990s, and I used a gas tank from a 1970s Dart. I don't have one of those gas tanks, and I don't remember exactly where I put it, but I know it will work. I probably put it right back here. Again, I do not have a Dart tank to uh, give that a try again. What I do have is I picked up a 1970 uh, Mustang gas tank. So let's go take a look at the plan here. So right down here is a 70 Mustang tank. I saw online a guy that had done this in a fleet side, I think a 1970, so the body style previous to the tin grills. And it, it looked like it fit real well, and I was hoping that the width was the same between frame rails and all of that sort of thing. They are a little bit different on this cross member here, and this is an important cross member because it's right here at the spring mount, so it keeps this at the proper distance and it keeps them aligned. So I think uh, I don't want to have to remove this cross member. The Mustang tank is really actually a good size. It fits really well between these frame rails, and it fits front to back pretty well. Comes back a little bit further than I would like, primarily because the frame starts to slope up right here, and the flange on the sides of the tank is flat, so it really wants to be flat. You can't go really too far forward or it starts to hit this slope unless you have a shelf that allows you to put it up higher, but if you try to do that, it hits here. Let me clamp some brackets in or put something in here to give you an idea of the how well this fits though. Okay, so what I've done is I've clamped boards underneath the rail, there and here, and just put the flange of this on. It's got a flange that runs along here, but you can see it's almost even, you know, with the, uh, the frame. And then I have another board clamped under here. So this is how it's going to sit. These braces have to be below the frame. They can't be above because if you put it above, the tank hits right in here. So you can see not a lot of room there. And on this side, not a whole lot of room either. It's a really, really snug fit. I think this is about a 20 gallon tank to the rear. You can see how close it comes to the very back. And then this is where the slope begins, where this frame starts to move up. You can see right there. So the reality is it fits just about as close to perfect as you can get. The sending unit comes out right here. So we've got plenty of space to run it either that way or this way over to the frame rail. Now, I am not thrilled with this. The filler is right here below the bed. You might be able to, you know, do something behind the license plate and cobble something together. So I might do that, or 
I might cut this, plug that hole, and relocate it to either here or here. Depends on where the fenders are on this. This is going to be a step side. So the bed sides are, I think, right about here. And then it's got a fender that comes out over here. I don't want it to be in the way of the fender, so it has to be behind the fender. You can see the bed sits right here, so I've got this much space. I'd guess that's about two and a half, maybe three inches of space to bring a filler hose through and down into the tank. One of the pluses about this tank is, if I can find it, right there, it's got a drain plug, which is kind of nice. My understanding is that on the Mustangs, this is actually the floor of the trunk right here. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I'm going to build. I'm going to start cutting uh, steel. So this gives you an idea of what I'm going to build. I'm going to cut So this gives you a general idea of how it's going to get mounted and what I'm going to build. I'm going to go find some steel and do some fabrication of these brackets and we'll get it uh, we'll get it put in. Well, this is absolutely overkill, but I've got it on hand. It is quarter inch thick by it looks like four inches wide. Yep. So I can cut this and clamp it and, you know, maybe bolt or weld it to the underside of the frame on this side and the other side to hold these flanges. And then I have a chunk of quarter by two that I can use for either the front or the rear. I need to dig around and find another piece for the other side. So I'm just going to trim these things up, basically cut it to length. There are some rivets that go through the frame where this cross member is, so I'll have to notch out or put holes for those rivets. But otherwise, I can uh, pretty much just take this flat and hook it up on the bottom. I don't know if I'm going to bolt it or if I'm going to weld it. Haven't decided yet. Make that determination once I have them all cut. If you are planning on doing this build, it might be worth noting that this filler hole is not centered. All the way across here is 38 inches, so 19 is the midpoint. So you can see that this hole is offset this direction about three quarters of an inch from center. Not the smoothest holes possible, but they should work. I've clamped one of them in on this side. It's up against this uh, leaf mount here, pretty much flush with the outside edge of the frame. Unfortunately, when I put the one on the other side, when it's all the way against the tank under here, you can see it's sticking out here, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch, something like that. And what it's doing is it's hitting the back side of this leaf mount. What that means is the overall width of these two plates plus the tank is about three sixteenths of an inch wider than frame to frame. So what I need to do is, well, there are a couple of things. I could split the difference here and take that off of each one of these plates so that the tank is completely centered. The other option is I could just take one of these and trim it down. I could also just trim out where these leaf mounts are and let it stick out. I'm not a fan of letting it stick out. I also don't know that it really needs to be 100% exactly centered. So what I think I'll do is I'll just take this one over and I'm going to trim down this, you know, 3 sixteenths or whatever it is to make it flush here. That way, when I weld it all in, it'll work. All right, I've got it all clamped in now with just these two side rails. So they're clamped to the 
truck frame here and here, and the gas tank is just sitting on them. I need to kind of figure the forward back out for it, but this part of the rotisserie is in the way now, so I'm going to unbolt it from the frame, pull it out, and the tank should actually slide in and out through the rear here. Then I can work on figuring out exactly where it goes and a brace piece that comes across here. In fact, once I have all of that done, I can drill holes and bolt this so the flanges will be underneath. My main concern, hopefully I never have to do it, but my concern is that I can't put bolts that go down through this because the bed's going to be sitting on top of this, and if I ever have to pull the tank, I really don't want to have to pull the bed to get to those bolts. So thinking ahead a little bit really, really will help. Now that it's up on wheels, it's much easier to see what I'm talking about. The tank just slides out. So I've just clamped this plate on here. It's just basically acting as a shelf that sits underneath the frame rail. That's what's important here. We have a rivet that goes through here, and that's what those holes that I drilled in these plates were for. It's for the other end of that rivet. Otherwise, it sits flat here and flat there again with the rivet. Now you'll see up here at the front, the frame curves up, but this keeps going straight, and really since this is quarter inch, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be attached here. Now I need to put a cross beam that comes across here at the front of the tank, and I probably don't need one at the rear. I think if it's bolted in, along three edges, that's enough, and that allows me to slide the tank in. If I put something in across the back here, then I can't slide the tank in and out. It would effectively be, you know, mounted permanently. And again, you can see we've got enough space all the way underneath this cross member here, which is perfect. I think when I bolt it down, I'll probably put rubber between this and the mount plate just to give it some anti-vibration so it doesn't squeak or rattle. I've got it all cleaned up, took most of the mill scale off as well. Now I just need to mark and drill these holes around it all the way around the perimeter here and then I can take the mount, attach it to the truck this should just slide in and bolt right down. If you're interested in building something like this for yourself, from the outside to outside is 37 and 3 quarters. Inside here to inside here is 30 and a quarter. And the inside dimension I from this corner here down I've got is 22 and a half. And the outside dimension from out there down is 24 and a half. These holes depend really on where you have it and where the rivets are on yours. But the middle of that hole is 10 inches from here. So 10 from this leg all the way up. I have the bracket clamped in. And the tank just sitting on it, I've verified that all the holes are in the right spot. The one thing that I've been kicking around in my head is how to mount this to the frame. I've seen other videos where they weld it to the frame, and that would probably work. I'm just real reticent to weld on the frame for a variety of reasons. If for no other reason than if I need to move it or take it out or something, it becomes a much, much harder prospect. Now I do notice that back here there are plenty of holes. And forward of this, you can see there's another hole right there. I think if I put a bolt through there and then pick one of these holes back here and run a bolt through, I'm inclined to go maybe this one rather than toward the back, mostly because I think I'm probably gonna put a class three hitch on this thing. So, yeah. I might go with that. 
I don't know, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, probably, because I'll probably end up having to fabricate stuff anyway. But if I have a bolt up there and here, then the same on the other side. Four bolts to hold in just a gas tank should be more than enough. I ordered some neoprene strips that are, I think, one inch wide. I'll go all the way around the perimeter here between this and the tank just to give it some sort of a isolation so it doesn't vibrate, maybe help prevent it from squeaking, that kind of thing. But short of putting that rubber in and bolting it down, installation is done. Again, I'm not certain that I'm going to keep this inlet here. I might end up moving it to over here or up here. But if I do, that will be a separate video. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.